Okay. <clears throat> Today um, is the transition day from the days of Birch into the days of Rowan, um, also known as the mountain ash. And uh, Rowan is famous for its bright red berries, which you can see behind me there. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> focusing this year on the medicine offered by each tree of the Owen. So this evening's talk is about the medicine of the Rowan tree, which hasn't been as straightforward as the medicine given by the birch tree. So it's needed a little bit of um, thinking outside of the box a little bit. And but it's interesting regardless. Um, before I continue, then I'm just going to put the PowerPoint presentation on that just takes me a second or so a few seconds right so <clears throat> this is rowan also known as mountain ash one of the distinctive things about it is its berries and looking around for knowledge and information about the medicinal aspects of rowan it's not as easy as the birch tree was most of the law for the rowan tree is more to do with folk magic and cunning magic rather than herbalism even in nicholas culpepper's complete herbal there's no mention of the rowan tree or the mountain ash but there is medicine to be found um, <clears throat> Rowan takes us from the 27th degree of Capricorn to the 15th degree of Aquarius. In plain speaking, it will take us from today until actual in bulk, which isn't the 1st of February. This year it lands on the 4th of February, is the exact midpoint between winter solstice and the spring equinox you know so astrologically speaking 4th of february but the law then uh, for rowan is all to do with aquarius mainly three degrees of capricorn and the rest is aquarius and that is heavily influenced by the celtic gaelic goddess brigid bridey brigantia and we touched on that this time last year so if you want to see the kind of Bridget law about rowan you want to look on the youtube channel for the video gathering around the grove rowan 2022 that was last year's talk kind of like the overview now this year's talk is about the medicine but before we get there you'll notice that every single rowan berry has a little five pointed star in it and the beads are often dried and turned into beads sorry the berries are dried and turned into beads and, and are often worn as necklaces and things because it, it's a symbol of protection just having the pentagram and even and in places like yorkshire they would plant a rowan tree in the corner of a field to protect the livestock you know so it again it was just kind of cunning magic protective charm against bad magic against witches and and so on or diseases and stuff but having the five-pointed star on its berries is interesting as it's the first of the rose family pentagram now rowan is of the sorbus genus of the rose family you know and there it is it's the second tree in the om sequence but it's the first tree of the rose family pentagram which interlaces with the evergreen tree pentagram it also is special with this kind of end of the old beginning of the new and, and looking into some of the flower essences related to rowan they seem to carry that letting go of the old traumas and moving forward in life you know i'll come to that when i talk about the flower essences but it is kind of carrying that seasonal magic if you like of 
you know, the snowdrops have risen at, in bulk and the first signs of spring are just beginning to crack through the ice, as it were, that the winter is over, that there is this promise of spring. And that's definitely carried on with the, um, like I say, the flower essences. essences. Now, <clears throat> herbalism, medicinal wise, um, apart from the bark, which is claimed to help as a decoction, you know, kind of like a tea, help for diarrhea. That, that's the only thing I could find out about the tree itself. All of the herbalism from the rowan tree is from its berries from primarily. Now the berries are, when they're fresh, they're very astringent. You know, if you put one in your mouth, it's like like a blackthorn berry it sucks all the moisture out of your mouth and make sucks your cheeks in so it's that kind of thing also people find them bitter now you can eat them fresh one or two but uh, you know you if you ate a, a whole bowl full you you'd you'd have diarrhea it would be coming out of you you know however it's about knowing your medicines and working with them properly so the, the way to work with the rowan berry rather than fresh is to either cook it or dry it, you know, and that way you get rid of the astringent flavoring, you get rid of the bitterness, and it's also a way of preserving it. So, you know, this medicine that the rowan tree gives, it's not there all year round. It's there at the end of summer, early harvest time, and you've got to take those berries and make them last, you know, so you either do it by making a jelly or a jam is very popular with people like a, you know, just rowan berry jam. People use it as a side dish with various meats, a bit like cranberry sauce with turkey, that kind of thing. But I wouldn't recommend that for medicine because you're using a bucket load of sugar to preserve it and sugar has its problems you know so the most to my mind the most intelligent way of using it is to just dry it you know you can dry it and then you can rehydrate it in herbal teas and get the benefits so the, the benefits of the rowan berry then are that it is very very high in asorbic acid i.e vitamin c that Every tissue in the human body needs vitamin C to replenish and grow. And the frustrating thing with vitamin C is that our bodies do not store it, you know, like they store fat and other things, you know, but it won't, the body doesn't store vitamin C. So we have to keep consuming it, you know. So foods that are high in vitamin C are brilliant for us. They're great for our immune systems. Now, um, what does it do? Uh, it boosts the immune system because of the vitamin C. It's a laxative, you know, so the, it's quite interesting. If you've got diarrhea, the bark of the Roman tree will fix you. But if you've got constipation, the berries will fix you, you know. So one way or the other, it kind of sorts out the flow of getting rubbish out of your body. Um, and that brings you on to the next thing is that it's a diuretic, you know, because it's going to make you wee a lot. And but that's how you flush out toxins as well. So the diuretics are good. And because it's flushing out toxins, it's really good for your skin. It's going to make your skin look nice and healthy. You get rid of all the toxins inside. The final thing is it can be gargled uh, for sore throats. Now how ancient people did this without glass jars and without plastic bags or Tupperware boxes, you know, it, to dry them is one thing, but to keep your dried berries safe from mold and damp is a tricky thing in itself. You know, they'd have to be stored in a very dry place somehow, but potentially if it's dried, you can use it all year round. And another thing that's available all year round is pine tree needles. Now, I mentioned that because pine tree needles are very high in vitamin C as well. So you, you can actually drink pine needles as a tea, 
So a uh, pine needle tea with some dried rowan berries thrown into the mix would be a vitamin C powerhouse. You're going to boost up um, the immune system of the body stuff. Now, <clears throat> the flowers of the rowan are beautiful. Uh, they're tiny, every, and each one is five petaled. Again, you know, it's five petaled, like the the, the, the five pointed star on the berries. Now, I think you could, uh, uh, I think you can use the flowers, but it seems a waste because if you take the flowers, then you don't get the berries. You know, you kind of want to leave the flowers alone for the fruit to mature into the berries, but. A nice thing to do with hawthorn blossom is to uh, take some hawthorn blossom and keep it in a bottle of mead. And that's meant to be a really good tonic all year round. And I suspect you could do the same with rowan blossom or, or any blossom, really, you know, that you can actually preserve a handful of blossoms into an alcohol. Mead is a lovely one. And it's a way of keeping the medicine of that plant with you. Now, I haven't read that anywhere. It's just an idea I have, and I don't know what medicinal value it would have, probably more in the realms of flower essences than, than herbalism, but maybe not. I don't know. I, I couldn't find anything specifically about rowan flower uh, herbalism. However, <clears throat> the rowan flowers are used as flower essences by a number of different companies you know so I scanned around on the internet looking at various flower essence makers to get the general gist of what they considered rowan flowers flower essence good for um, the, oh, the predominant theme was forgiveness and peace and reconciliation mainly peace with the past so you know the traumas of the past that don't give you any peace it helps you to let go of that and peace within yourself you know so it's very much uh almost like the snowdrops which i'll come to you know is this letting go of the old letting go of all that no longer serves and there's just a inner peace that comes with the flower essence of rowan according to various companies that make flower essences. Now, <clears throat> when we did the birch tree, there were some fungus, fungi, that were unique to the birch tree, i.e. chaga is unique to the birch tree, and the birch polypore unique to the birch tree. So trying to find a fungus or fungi mushrooms that are unique to the rowan tree, I couldn't find any. However, going at things a little bit sideways, I'm a Cancerian, um, I googled with Google Pictures uh, rowan tree and mountain ash and fungi and to see what photographs came up and, and the there's loads of, if you do that, there's loads of photographs that come up and the overriding mushroom that turns up for the rowan tree mountain ash is this one, it's called the honey fungus mushroom. Now, the thing with the honey fungus mushroom is it's not unique to the rowan tree, but it's not unique to any tree. It, it, it's quite an aggressive parasite and it will happily grow on lots of different trees. So as it doesn't belong to any tree in particular, um, when in the Owen Grove do we look at it? And like I said, when I Googled rowan tree fungi, this guy, this fungus was the most common to turn up in all of the Google photographs. So it's a bit of a harlot. It will go to any tree in the forest, but the honey fungus mushroom, is one of those super nutrient superfoods. You know, it's totally edible. Of course, we're all scared about knowing whether we've picked the right mushroom type or not. And it does look similar to some mushroom groups that are not good for us, you know? So again, you've got to do your research, but the, the, 
the, the lucky thing with the honey fungus mushroom is you don't need to go foraging. You can buy dried honey fungus mushroom online. It's an edible mushroom. It's perfectly safe. It's been used by traditional Chinese medicine for centuries, you know, so you can buy it as a dried mushroom and, and recook it. You can also buy it as a powder and add it to food in that way. So it's this super mushroom. Now I'll, I'll tell you what it does. So again, it's not unique to the rowan tree, but it likes the rowan tree. It's, it's the most common fungus that attacks the rowan tree. Apparent, I've never eaten it knowingly. Um, apparently has a sweet and nutty flavor, but mainly it's high again in vitamin C, just like the rowan berries, high in selenium and antioxidants. And it's a massive immune system booster. Uh, it's also antibiotic, a natural antibiotic, you know. Things that traditional Chinese herbalism use it for are vertigo, insomnia, and epilepsy helps with those things. It's famous for brain health, uh, restoring brain cells, and it's being looked at by modern science as a, a power aid in helping the fight against Alzheimer's disease and also dementia, again, because it, it helps the brain cells to replenish, to, to sort themselves out. <clears throat> it also reduces blood sugar levels. You know, so people with type 2 diabetes, it's going to bring the blood sugar levels down as well. There's a few things that do, like cinnamon and apple cider vinegar. But if you've got type 2 diabetes, then powdered honey mushroom fungi is, is going to be good for you. You know, as always, do your research. <clears throat> a bowl of peanuts we could all eat but one of us could die eating a peanut. You know, it's, there's always someone with an allergy to something, so you need to do your research. So that's the only fungus, um, fungi, that I could find related to the rowan tree. And again, it's not specific to the rowan, but it favours the rowan. Now, so that's it, really. That there's the, the main medicine of the rowan tree is the berries and you have to dry them and use them in different ways, mainly as a tea, I would recommend. And then there's this mushroom. Now, with the lack of other medicines, it's also a good time to look at the flowers at this time of the year, or, or following the story of Keridwen, gathering every day or charm-bearing herbs, you know, so as we follow the trees round, we can look at the seasonal flowers of that very time of year as well. So right now, and for the next 18 days, right up until in bulk, this is the time in England anyway, British Isles, of snowdrops. Snowdrops are the very first traditionally flower to appear after the winter time. And I took these photos today. They're not quite open. Uh, this one and this one they're just beginning you know so easily in the next week they're going to be fully open and this is the first ones to open there's lots of clumps around here that haven't opened at all so come come in bulk they will all be open and shining brightly now <clears throat> um the snowdrop again it's not a medicine that we can use as it is. Um, the bulb of the plant is poisonous to us, but it contains a chemical, a chemical thing called um, galantamine. And this is being used to help, um, what's it helping with? It's, it's, it's similar to the, um, honey fungus mushroom and that it's helping people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia you know it's also being used as a as a um a, a remedy to chemical warfare 
as well how i don't know there is a video on youtube which i'll stick on the facebook group about the science of all of that but that's not anything we can really use without a big pharmaceutical laboratory you know so foraging we can't use snowdrops as medicine other than by flower essence you know and there's a number of companies online doing snowdrop flower essences so uh looking around i didn't go to one company in particular i kind of looked at half a dozen and and got the general kind of sense that they were suggesting it was beneficial for and generally it's um very similar to the rowan flower remedy flower essence in that it's triumph over fear and self-realization and letting go of the trauma you're holding on to that kind of thing uh so it's about like the rowan flower essence the snowdrop is also about peace within yourself um forgiving yourself like sometimes we're our own worst enemy you know we beat ourselves up over the things we might have said or might have done or the the hurt we've done or the shame we feel you know so this is all about forgiveness of yourself so that you're free to move forwards you know um so that that self that piece of self and that piece of mind rowan flowers and snowdrops and you know Bridget and Bridie and in bulk and the brand new year are all about that you know you're stepping forwards into a a new year a new horizon and the flower essences seem to follow that kind of logic now along with those kind of insights into the essence of a flower there is also Bridget herself as a goddess related to in bulk and Aquarius and the Aquarian age that we're entering into you know uh, and Bridget herself is the main goddess of in bulk but that also makes her the main figurehead of this first acma this first group of the oem so there's four acmas and each one has a fire festival in bulk beltane lunasa sawain and she's the figurehead of in bulk so she's the goddess overseeing these first five trees and amongst her many attributes is she's a goddess of healing so using rowan flower essence rowan berries even the honey fungus mushroom and even the essence of the snowdrop is all going to be carrying the light and the healing power of Bridget you know it's that time of year it's that magic and quickening of in bulk now there's many ways of getting the essence you can buy flower essences and use them you can also hold a piece of rowan wood this is my rowan stake and I took this photograph some years ago next to a rowan tree at this time of year so at this time of year the rowan buds are not even quite open you know but they're they're gray and they're fluffy and they're getting ready to open and they're there with all of that potential and I would just remind you that um you know and one of the most profound ways of getting tree magic or tree medicine is what I call tree breathing you know actually go to a rowan tree set, spend some time with the rowan tree and breathe with the rowan tree and maybe think of the medicines we've observed here about the forgiveness of self and the peace within and and the letting go of the things holding you back you know allow yourself to be cleaned by in bulk by Bridget you know what is the point in forever beating yourselves up it was a really interesting presentation with the fly agaric mushroom with the lady Amanita Dreamer talking about Amanita but she was talking about the psychology of the self and about kind of how we can be our own worst 
enemies and people having bad trips with mushrooms and things like that. And she said, there's nothing more evil, nothing more destructive than the self telling the self that it's not worthwhile, that it shouldn't live, it shouldn't exist, that, that that's unworthy. Of course, all that is nonsense, but that's the extremes of self-criticism or depression, you know. So to actually see your inner child and forgive yourself for all the silly things you might have done you know that you know when you were 30 you were 30 when you were 20 you were 20 and you know wisdom in hindsight is a great thing but you can't beat yourself up forever you know and it serves nobody you actually help society by forgiving yourself and, and just moving forwards and breathing peacefully enough of that I'm on a rant so that's the presentation and I'll stop sharing and we can talk about that for a while and then we'll do a meditation for the rowan tree you can put your mics back on we're still recording i yeah. found a rowan tree in colorado um a couple of years ago i noticed a tree way up on a place we call mcclure pass which is Oh, I'd say between 8,000 and 9,000 feet, maybe a little higher than that. And I was on some kind of event and I was walking back and I noticed the berries. And um, I didn't know what this tree was, but it's, I guess we don't call it a uh, rowan. Somebody said, oh, that's an ash tree. And so I guess it's the mountain ash then, because yep. it's this tree, it's these berries. It, it's also called the quicken tree and quick beam, a witch's tree. But the most common in the British Isles is rowan. But lots of people say mountain ash. It smells lovely. It smells lovely. The blossoms oh, are yeah. amazing, aren't they? They're beautiful. Yeah, can I, think I, the is, I think the smell is quite dev uh, divisive. Some people actually love it. And some people think it really stinks. Um, <laughs> I, I've heard it depends. that. I, I like it personally um, myself. I think it's a lovely smell. It's I've very, heard that. Uh, very distinctive. Yeah, Raymond, I've heard people say that about elderflowers. Like some books even say oh. it smells of cat pee. I've never found yeah. that myself. But um, yeah. Sarah, you were going to say something? Yeah. The place I used to work had a had a um, a white sorbus, a white mountain ash. So it looks very much similar, but the, the berries are like little snowballs, um, and that attracted lots of interest. I've never seen it anywhere else, but um, that looks very nice. Marcello, Marcello, yeah. Were you going to say something? Um, oh no, no, actually, I'm. I was just about to say, but it's a, it's a different topic, that I made um, a jam. I posted on the group a time ago, was I think uh, last spring. Not last spring, I, I don't remember the date now, but I did a rowan berry jam. And it's good, I mean, it's bitter, it's still bitter, but I, I'm not a bitter uh, taste person. I don't like bitter things, but it goes really well with goat cheese. Like the goat cheese, uh, on a toast or on a cracker, something like that, because the thing cuts off the um, the bitter thing, and it can, and then you can feel the berry taste, like you took off the the bitter, and yeah, it's it's really good and quite easy to do. You just need to boil them with some apple to make them more jam like, and yeah. Sarah. Yeah, um, I was just, uh, as we were, we were doing the um, presentation, just looking up, I've got a tree book and some herb law books at the side of me, and it was just mentioned that the seeds are toxic with the, in the rowan berry and to remove them, not to, you know, not to ingest them. So there was that one. The other question I wanted to ask you was, you mentioned that, um, that Bridget, um, 
was the she oversaw the first five trees in the in the Owen. Oh, um, so could you? I know we've got Birch, you've got Rowan. What are the what are the next three, please? So my my logic for saying that is, uh, and uh, and this isn't authentic law. This is just me looking at patterns. So the OM is divided into four groups. In Irish, they're called ACMA. It just means group or clan or family. Um, and each of the four groups has a fire festival. So I'm seeing the first group as holding the fire festival of Imbolc. And, and mm -hmm. she's the Celtic goddess of Imbolc because Imbolc is, is her festival. So the first five trees then are Birch, Rowan, Alder, A-L-D-E-R, Willow and Ash. So they're, they're the first five. Yeah. Um, these are just patterns I'm observing as I go around. Also, you know, this first ACMA has this rising energy. This, literally the buds are coming through the ground and the shoots are coming up and the sap's rising and, and, and it's playing that in the, the sun's year. And we're rising from winter solstice up to spring equinox, which is the ash tree. So it has that rising energy. I call it the budding time. And then, although there's some flowers around, from spring equinox until summer solstice, that's the blossoming time. That's when hawthorn blooms and, and everything else is opening up its petals completely. So this first quarter is this kind of budding time. And then the next quarter is blossoming, flowering. And then the third quarter is fruit, At fruiting. First. And the fourth quarter is seeds going back into the ground. So that, that's kind of played out. So this bridie and the rowan tree, it's all this kind of rising upwards. And uh, we, just to cover what we talked about last time, with the yew tree, the kind of midnight zero point, that's the winter solstice and the rebirth of the sun, takes you to the birch tree, which is Ellen and this ray of light following the rebirth of the sun. And now Ellen takes that ray of light to the rowan tree, and one of the main symbols of Bridey is this eternal flame, this creative fire. So it's almost like this rebirth of the sun, the ray of sunlight and this eternal flame is driving up the rising of energy into the first shoots and buds. It's like the quickening. And that's interesting that the rowan tree is also called quick beam or quickening tree as well. Everything I just said is just patterns. There's another I'm seeing, you know, it's not it's not authentic yeah. Celtic law. No, yeah, but thank you. It makes sense. Yeah, Mar Marcelo. It dried oh. those berries like for more than one year ago, and they still in this good shape. Like I keep them in a good place with a red thread. You see. Yeah. And sometimes I use them as to do some amulets. I, I use some um, pieces of wood as well, like the rowan wood. And uh, normally I I pyrograph the, the symbol, the, the rowan symbol, you know. And then I use like an amulet on the, on the neck. How hard are they to touch or are they a bit soft? Are they hard? I mean, you, it, it's, it's kind of uh, looks like a uh raisin texture you know like but more more hard than a raisin because they are completely the de hatred i think the height yeah and yeah but you see you you can squeeze in them but they are completely dry if you try to squeeze you can but i like to pierce them with a needle and then put the the thread on so it it helps it to dry and also you can use like after dried, you can use to do the amulets or whatever. Have you or tried tried the drinking them? Yeah. Have you tried using them as a tea? No, no, it, because no, I, I haven't because uh, I I know about this uh, the toxins on them, and I know from the jam is safe because you boil it. But I, I never tried to drink. I have a, a bag full of dried ones as well because some of them I, per, uh, I pierced, and the other one I just saved in a box. I beg to see how 
how long I can store them. And it's the same same thing. One year, more than one year now, and they are still like in good shape. Was the same. I will try. As I, I will definitely try it after that. Like because you you teach me that you can do this. But yeah, mm -hmm. I will try. I've used them for a tea. I use them. It's quite interesting coming in because. I kind of just do things for myself quite often and I've using them around them all and I always find it quite rejuvenating when I have that around this time of the year and I use like a little kind of a similarly I'll thread them and use them like a little meditation bead sometimes as well I find them quite good almost like a wee worry bead sometimes you can kind of a sit and, uh, I sit and have my thoughts with them as well so yeah I've used them a couple of years now I find them quite I find them rejuvenating, yeah. I didn't read anything about the seeds being toxic. So I mean, I have to double check that. But as I understood from what I was reading, people are just putting the dried berry, you know, if four or five of them into herbal teas to get the vitamin C and benefits from them. So I, I guess they're not consuming the seed. It's just... The rehydrated flesh is flavoring the tea maybe uh, yeah need to look up on that i, I just typed into the chat but uh, uh when you cook them it deactivates that parasorbic acid that's in there so you want to cook them if you're going to eat them would drying them do the same thing yep probably to some degree but when you're making a tea you're also using the hot water so it probably yeah. further help that yeah. I just I just bite one of the berries, the dried berries, and they they taste like sour, not bitter anymore, not a distrogent, as you say at the beginning of the video. I didn't chew it uh, entirely, but I did bite one of them. Mm. Yeah, it's sour. It's easy to chew. It's not hard. <laughs> Oh, swallow the seed, Marcello. No, no, I, I speak, I speak, and I heard, I heard that. I just poisoned. No, no, I didn't swallow. I didn't swallow it. I was just trying to see the the taste or. Yeah, it says here the seeds are toxic, and these should always be removed if the berries are used in cooking or medicine. And it also says that we now know that the rowan has antibiotic properties. Oh. As well. And that the source of that is Hatfield Herbal. It's a great book, really uh -huh. good. But it's it's yeah, it's right. primarily folklore, but it does have some bits of medicinal um, wisdom in as well. I, I, I could... see the the, the the cover again. Hatfield. I'll put it in the group. I'll pop it in the chat. Yeah, I'd be quite happy to have a handful of dried rowan berries and just chew them and spit the seeds out you know i i, I eat you berries and spit <laughs> the seeds out it's the same, same sort of thing that's what i did yeah <laughs> so are the seeds <clears throat> i'm a little confused here <clears throat> if the seeds of the berry are toxic and the berries <clears throat> excuse me are, are small how kind of looks like they're smaller than like a healthy rose hip oh, they're smaller how do you than preserve the berry yeah. <clears throat> excuse me my throat is dry how does one preserve the berry and take the seeds out i don't it seems like you'd have to tear the berry apart to get the seeds out I, sorry i'm not a this is i'm just learning no. does that make sense what i'm asking if you're making jam do you take the seeds out do you sieve it in some way or do you leave right. the seeds in i don't know but sarah oh, said the, the i think you would normally you'd normally sit and get a pulp and then you would use the pulp from the fruit yeah. and have the seeds pretty much like you do when you're making like with you know rose hips because they can be irritating the rose hip seeds and it, i think it's a similar sort of principle yes okay yeah. if, you, if you cook Rowan berry, uh, by cooking it, it deactivates the the poisonous effect. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, 
the, and if you dry them, you can reduce it as well. But the cook it, if you actually cook it, then it doesn't matter if the seeds are in because it's the cooking of it has has taken that poisonous effect away. Yes. But what about making tea with the dried berries? I don't know well, the, this. The, the, you'd have to be careful with the tea because, you know, if you cook it, you're cooking it at a lot hotter temperature than a tea. So you maybe wouldn't want to eat the berries that were in the tea, but it, would, it wouldn't hurt you to drink the water that the, the berries had been in, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so. Going out on a limb here, but could you cook them and then dry them? It's, uh, could you cook them and then dry them? I don't see why not. It's, I've never um, tried it. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it would be good. I mean, when, because they change the texture when you cook. And then if you, I'm not sure I can be, Telling a wrong thing. I'm not. I'm not sure about this, but I don't know how to dry something like you cook it. You know what I mean. I'm making sense. I'm not. Sure. Yeah, I don't think it would be the same same thing. You know. But I mean, you can cook lots of different fruits and then dry them into a leather, can't you? You may kind of make like a, a leather strip of chewy, chewy fruit. Mm. So that could be done as well. Okay. Mm. So you, you could cook them, then put them through a, a sieve, so you get the pulp from them, and make, as you say, a leather or me membrio, and that sort of thing. That makes um, sense. And try that. So you're actually taking the seeds out of it and the um, the skin, and just using the the flesh of it, um, and use that maybe. Mm -hmm. I think you do that in, for culinary use anyway because I can't imagine that the seeds are particularly pleasant to you know, crunch on and probably break your teeth and are they like a, are they, are they like, um, are they like a, like a monogyna like a, a half farm a single seed I'm not sure I've not worked with rowan berries before so um, Sarah I'm curious about your herbal book does it talk about making tinctures for example yeah, I mean I it could be work. slightly cooked, remove the seeds, then uh, make a tincture with a strong alcohol. No, it's yeah. not. It's not that. It's not that in depth. But um, I mean, you know, tincture making oh, uh, is not um, yes, it, uh, not a mystery. Uh, but I think that you could do that. And as far as I'm aware, for um, make for tincture making, you only soak your active ingredients for two weeks anyway. You know, you don't leave it in there long term because it starts to break down and then you lose the efficacy of any of the properties of the material that you're working with. Right. Does it talk about uh, water soluble versus resins in the Sorry, berries? Some, some no. bad background about noise. The, almost somewhere. There is really yeah. bad background noise. Um, there's no, it's it's not, it, the, the whole book is a secret history of British plants. So you would want a more you would want a more a more in-depth herbal for that. It seems to be largely a tree overlooked. Like I said in the Nicholas Culpepper complete herbal, it's not there. And it's not there as Rowan, it's not there as mountain ash, it's not there as quicken tree or anything. It's just not there. Um, which I thought was really strange. Um, so it's, and, and I, you know, I suspect other cultures uh, are using it in a way we're not, you know, I, I met a lady from, I think it was Sweden some years ago, and she was quite amazed that we were in a hiking group and none of, uh, very few people would want to taste them. And she was quite happily eating handfuls of them. And to her, it was quite normal that, you know, <laughs> you know it's just like us picking blackberries you know but she thought we were all very weak english people for not liking the astringent flavor you know <laughs> i think sometimes that can come about as well if we've got a lot of natives that do the same job like i'm thinking hawthorn really you know it's the same family it's you know astringent it's full of tannins and it's a really good source of vitamin c and I, and I think that we kind of move out of necessity. And also, a round tree, when you think about it, it grows quite tall. 
you know it's not the ideal sort of foraging bush necessarily whereas mm. something like a hawthorn or you know sloes blackberries they're much more accessible to humans whereas like, i think rowans have traditionally been left for the birds for our sort of high flying friends really i don't know just a theory yeah i think it's probably quite true has anyone got any experience of honey mushrooms honey mushroom fungus yeah. It's a no, you've totally heard. totally edible and um you can buy it online dried or powdered <laughs> long used by traditional Chinese medicine, but I've never eaten it. And uh I'd like to try it. Yeah. No one here's tried it then. Um Manu has tried it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, you know, I was going to say, uh, sorry, on a slightly different thing about the um, the thing of it being a protector from bad magic, black magic, whatever. And um, I thought that's quite interesting. And on the level that there's not much information about it, maybe it's kind of a bit not thought about because it's, you know, associated with maybe the matriarchal culture or something like that with yeah. the pentagram stars on it and stuff and Maybe it's a maybe. Yeah, I just wonder if it doesn't have yeah, a, a forgotten history. Well, you did say that, but yeah. Well, a, a thing that struck me is I, I was aware that various parts of the country farmers put a, a rowan tree in the corner of their field, and I just assumed it was a folk magic kind of protective thing. But just this evening, I was reading about the berries being antibacterial. And that some farmers give the berries to their livestock as a way of flushing out gut problems and things like that. So mm -hmm. one of the bryatheroum for the rowan tree is friend of cattle. And I wonder if it had a kind of assisting animals. And that might be why it's in farmers fields as well, not just as a folk magic protection, but actually maybe it's a once a year detox for the animals or something. A medicine for the for the animals, yeah. Yeah, like a flushing flushing of their guts, getting rid of worms, that kind of thing. Like horse yeah. chestnut. Yeah. Yuri, um, yeah. I've got a, a friend that that once once a year brings me little red um, packages tied up with red ribbon that have got rowan berries and salt in them to be put on in the perimeter of the property. So there's obviously something in the folklore magic about yeah. protecting properties with that. I, I, it might be as simple as it having the, the pentagram on, but there is lots of folk yeah. magic about rowan berries being a protective charm against witchcraft and things like that, you know. So, uh, again, f protecting your livestock from nasty bacteria or the scary witches, one of them, you know, it, it, it's symbolically <laughs> it's the pentagram, but it also is antibacterial. So that's quite interesting, you know. Yeah. But also, it represents... Yeah. It's interesting because that... Yeah, also if it represents Bridget, Bridie, then it's, you know, it's the goddess protecting the property, isn't it, as well, and protecting your children. And Yeah. It, it's interesting because I've just moved house, and well, six months ago, and so it was one of the last things that I actually picked up around the house, you know, when we were clearing the moving the house, um, was to pick up some of these little, little packages that have been set there. And it was interesting because the salt... Um, had sort of changed its substance um, through through the the years. So interesting. No, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we're now in Rowan for the next eighteen days or so until the fourth of February, which is astrological in bulk, fourth uh, of February although most people celebrate on the 1st of February, the Gregorian calendar, but the actual midpoint between solstice and equinox is the 4th of February. So between now and then, let's use the Facebook group for sharing any insights about Rowan tree medicine and 
honey fungus mushroom and snowdrops. So uh, we use the group for that. It's a good good way of uh, sharing over the next eighteen days. So um, I'm going to stop recording and we'll do our meditation. We'll do the meditation to the Rowan tree. So if you mute your microphones, I'll do that. <laughs> 